And we're about five miles northwest of downtown Tampa at beautiful Raymond James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. Tonight we've got the crew set for what should be a real treat, a great Monday night matchup, as it'll be the Philadelphia Eagles taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Here's second and three. Once again, it's Swift. Oh, nice move. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A big pickup there for the Eagles first down, 18 yards. Anytime a team goes on the road, there's always that little bit of fear that maybe they can be affected by the hometown crowd. But this is where game planning really came into play. They talked about it all week. Go in there, establish yourselves. Well, that run right there, that slows down the crowd and gives them a lot of confidence. And Hurts able to show off some of that elusiveness as he slides to the ground there and in the process picks up the first down. Opted to run for it. The decision a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 right at the 40. On the option left, it's Hurts. And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. Well, he is certainly dangerous when he spots a lane, and he keeps it himself there and worked out well. And how about the moving parts on a play like this? You know you have to practice it over and over because... It's almost like a ballet that has to be choreographed. But how about once he made the decision to go, he committed to it and went. Let's face it, most teams are going to defend the running back much more than the quarterback on that type of a play. And that might have been a situation where even though you don't hit on the deep throw, you at least put in the defender's minds early in the game that we're going to press the ball deep against your secondary. And that can have a ripple effect on how they function throughout. Throwing his hurts. Complete to Zacchaeus. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Coming up here, looking for three yards to pick up the first. Hurts. I had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Didn't get it. There's definitely a difference here because they have a chance to get seven, maybe eight if they pushed it. Instead, they'll let this settle for three. Yeah, opening drive, holding him to three psychologically. Maybe a win for the defense. The kick by Elliott is good. And the Eagles, they take a 3 nothing lead. That was a long, sustained opening drive, but in the end, only able to get three, the field goal out of it. And absolutely, you'll take the points and the early lead. You never get those back. But there will be a little bit of disappointment that they didn't punch it in for six after that kind of yardage and that kind of drive that they had. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. So out come the Bucks now. At 
Now Mayfield and the Bucks come up on first and 10 at their own 18. They start to drive with White. And nothing but green grass here, middle of the field. How about this? Racing to the end zone. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. Rashad White, 82 yards. And the Buccaneers are able to answer the early three points and take a first quarter lead. And with his speed, if he just finds the slightest crease, he can take it the distance like he did there. How about the leverage up front? Offensive line out leveraging the defensive front to create that space, that crease that he was looking for. And once he hits open field, he's going to be very difficult to catch and go out. Touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Boston Scott on the return from his end zone. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily enough. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. <laughs> I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations. But a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route? Definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them, they're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Hurt sets up to throw it. The throw here, right sideline, falls incomplete. So back to back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Off the play fake, here's Hurts. And he's going to come up a few yards short. Brought down at the 45. Pretty solid gain of seven yards that time as he scrambled. But now they face a fourth down. That looked great when he first took off because, in my mind, there was room to run and he had the marker in his sight. But I certainly didn't expect him to close so quickly, and neither did he. They got to him just in time, and now that forced him to make a decision with his fourth down call. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. We call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Bucs are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. They begin the drive on the ground. It's right. And he goes down at the 26. A pickup of 13, and that last play began at the 13. First down. Well, they're making a real first quarter statement with a run game, no doubt. For those who remember old school football, running it, establishing things, seeing backs find holes, get through them, they've got to like what they're seeing from this unit so far. Right now, they've decided to, say, as you said, establish the run game, and they've been successful doing it. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. 
But that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. They'll go up the middle with White. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. That second down play nets a minus four. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, this will be incomplete. The rush gets home just as he was letting that go. That could have been worse. Instead, it's fourth down. Now that's a good bounce back after giving up a touchdown on the opening drive. Just one first down permitted and then out. Obviously, no loss of confidence with that defense. And now they get to turn it back to their offense. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fielded at about the 28. And a seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And it will be Eagles football first and 10. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. They'll start on the ground with Swift. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go-around, the offense won the challenge. They go play action with Hurts. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. And partner to me, that one was all about timing. If he's there too early, it's going to be a pass interference call. If he's too late, it's a completed pass. He was Johnny on the spot on that one. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Hurts to throw. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. And he's going to be out of bounds all the way down inside the 15. A big play there for Philly. 42 yards. This is what made the West Coast offense a staple around the NFL in the 80s and 90s. You don't have to push the ball deep downfield to come up with big plays. And there's an example of that right there. On first and ten, it's Swift. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards that time, a stark contrast from the big chunk on the previous play. Second down and eight. Now Hurt's going to keep it running left. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Jalen Hurts taking it in from 11 yards out. And the Eagles are able to move back in front. So they're down in the red zone. They opt to utilize his legs instead of the arm. It works out pretty well. I like what they were thinking there because in most situations now, defense is accounting for all the other runners on the field and, of course, for pass plays. But the quarterback position, oftentimes it is unaccounted for. Offense coordinator felt it, dialed it right up. Inside the red zone, is this something teams should maybe, depending on the quarterback, do more often? Definitely. If you've got a quarterback who can actually move it with his legs, that's an extra option and an extra weapon for you. I think they should utilize it more often. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. 
From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalposts, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. From the 25, here's second and six. Mayfield off the play fake. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field and it's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. Don't matter whether it's offense or defense, because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. To throw, Mayfield. Eagle pressure, too much this time. Down he goes. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. That'll be a 41-yard punt, just one yard on the return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Well, they're making an effort to get the ground game going tonight so far it's working i like what we're seeing from the offensive line they seem to have the leverage going and they're controlling things and re-establishing the line of scrimmage moving that defensive front backwards but also like what the runner's giving us too it appears that he's been waiting all day long to get out here and take off two yards on the pickup but that's all they needed to move the sticks second and one and people want to run the football this is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there pick up the first down they'll stay on the ground with swift 54 yards rushing for him now as he has gotten the night off to a hot start we are watching a runner having a really nice game carrying it very well. Vision is excellent, but boy, look at the help he's getting. Offensive line, I think they're pretty eager to block for him. Here now, second and four. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. Carlton Davis picks it, and the Buccaneers are in great shape here as they take over at the 46-yard line. Following the interception, Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Rocky start throwing the football. He's missed now on his first four attempts. Eager to see what his demeanor is going to be from this point forward because the best ones, they missed the first 15 attempts and they think they're going to hit the next 15. Let's see if he has that type of an attitude. Now a second down throw for Mayfield. And that falls to the ground incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. It's pretty early in the game, but they've already tried to establish him not just as a runner, but as a receiver as well. Didn't happen there, but I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them try again shortly. On third down, Mayfield. Under pressure, and down he goes. The corner blitz 
gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. My, oh, my, they've had some success bringing him off the edge. How about the gambling man who's the defensive coordinator? He's not just bringing pressure. He's bringing a corner to go after the quarterback. And it's worked twice now, twice like a charm. And not only has that worked like a charm, he's been awfully disruptive in his usual role covering receivers. Now he's rushing the passer as well. This is taken at the 18. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal is not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. From the 22 now, here's second and nine. Start of the second quarter, and it's the Eagles in possession. As they're looking at a second down and nine to go. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Philadelphia picking up the first on a gain of 15. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. Coming in to put a lick on it was Levante David. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. Second down, here's Hertz. Now a quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. something here on third down from the shotgun he'll look to throw and that's going to be too high out of bounds and incomplete one first down here and that's all folks good work by this defense to hold things in check and force a punting situation on fourth down punt coming from Braden Mann Here's a fair catch taken at about the 24-yard line. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Now Mayfield and the Bucs come up on first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll start here with a handoff to White. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. This guy's well on his way now to a big game on the ground. It's another good run there. Puts him over the century mark in yardage, and we're still in the second quarter. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. They stay on the ground with White. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. The problem with the defense is they're going to adjust and they keep giving them those five, six, seven yard runs over and over. They're likely to run it the whole way to the end zone. They'll be more than happy to take the yardage available and save some of their other plays in the playbook for another time. Mayfield on first down. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a gain of 16, first down Tampa Bay. Here's Mayfield. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 12 more yards there and another first down. 
Charles to move the chains that time they had to complete it in a double coverage and they got it done. And it's never easy overcoming multiple defenders, but he sure made it look simple. Found the right spot to exploit and won his one on two matchup. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Second and 10. They'll throw again. Here's Mayfield. Going quickly there, but it's incomplete. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. The offense on third down tonight, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 10. Mayfield now. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A field goal helps, but a touchdown gets you the lead. That had to be the message transmitted in the huddle. And they delivered there as that throw is going to keep the drive alive. And even better than that, set them up with a first and goal. Here's White. And it'll work his way closer to the goal line as he's got five down to the three. Hat tip to that offensive line. They're clearing some holes, even down here deep in the red zone. And that's a nice pickup on the ground on first and goal. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Now Mayfield. Godwin's got it. Touchdown Tampa Bay. The three-yard touchdown pass. And the Bucs have moved out in front. Slants. Everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom! Put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass. Got inside for the catch and the score. the touchdown. Here's McLaughlin to kick off. This taken in at the goal line. And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. The Eagles just about set to go to work on offense. The last series for him, a little disappointing. Forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive. First and 10. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 15. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. 80 yards for him on the ground so far tonight as he has been terrific in this first half. That's what love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. Now that's what he can do you know, when he keeps the football. It's not a huge gain, but it shows how hard it can be to stop him. Yeah, and I thought the defense had that one pretty well contained, and in fact, they probably came up and felt pretty good about what they did. Then they looked up and realized he still got good yardage out of it. He's a tough guy to stop. Hurts throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. And A.J. going to pick up an Eagles first down as he'll get this up to the 43. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks.
on the option to give to Swift here. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. Nice satisfying run on first down for the offense, picking up five, which means defensively, the thought process is entirely different. You don't want to panic, but at the same time, you're saying to each other, we've got to tighten this down. We can't give up gains like that. Here's a second and five. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. Fires the quick slant. A.J. Brown's got it. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 37. Philadelphia picking up the first down a gain of 15. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and get the quarterback a really nice target. So the completion good for six yards, and it'll be second down. It's a pick up of six. Brings up second and four at the 31-yard line. Back to the running game with Swift. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. On first and 10, it's Hurts. He's going to take a shot for the end zone. And that is incomplete. We're following the play here, now we've got an injury. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Here's second and ten. the option to give to Swift here. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 at a first. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick, he's been decisive, and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. Gainwell. Fighting, but he won't get too far. Maybe a yard, that's all, down to the two. It's a gain of a yard, and it'll set up second and goal. They go option right on second and goal. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Well, he's had success running the football on this one. Yeah, that's undeniable, but that time the defense was on to him. And partner, I think the more you see a play like this, the more they're able to diagnose it quicker and easier for them to defend it. I think you have to dress it up a little bit and show maybe some different formations and looks. Into the end zone, touchdown, Philadelphia. Jalen Hurts with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Eagles have yet again retaken the lead. They were looking to pass the ball there, but they forgot to account for the man with the football. Yeah, I can hear people right now saying, well, why don't you have a spy in your defense, someone who will dance with him and go where he goes. Well, oftentimes, if you utilize a spy, you've taken away someone in coverage as well. And oftentimes, the spy, not as athletic as the guy he's trying to keep up with, so he gets defeated anyway. And he turns third and goal into a touchdown.
Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. A time to get another look at this Buccaneer offense. And you figure, Charles, they have enough time here in the first half, more than a minute, to put a drive together, at least get them in position to try a field goal. Yeah, they've got all three timeouts at their disposal, so I'm actually thinking bigger. With those three timeouts, that amount of time on the clock, I'm thinking about trying to get a touchdown and settle for a field goal. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. I right, help me out here a little bit, partner, because what I'm seeing is a passing game that's just struggled to complete anything. No rhythm, no timing. Seems like every pass is also contested well, so give some credit to the defense. Now a second and 10. Mayfield looks to throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Throwing, Mayfield. It's caught, this is right. That'll go for a gain of seven, and that'll make it second down. Mayfield trying to get him up to the line as fast as he can. They'll look to throw again. Evans has it left side. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. First and 10, Mayfield. He's got right here. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout. And with half time on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Now a second and two. Going to the air again with Mayfield. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Early on, the running game's been working well. The offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit them over the top unsuccessfully. Mayfield on third and two. Flushed out right. Give him four yards there, and that should be the final play of this first half. So we've reached halftime here, and it's our visitors, the Eagles, leading this one. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, they're standing by as Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. And no fireworks to start the half. This will be a touchback. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. Second and six, just inside the 30. Mayfield. And a catch right side by Evans. He'll go down as a gain of six, and they'll be faced with a third and inches.
They'll try to pick this up on the ground with White. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. But it wasn't a goal line situation, but how about the goal line formation on third and short? They went in and went heavy. No surprise on who was going to get the football. How about the power exhibited there? Yeah, that was just put a hat on a hat, drive forward. Nice job to pick it up. They go right back to White here on first down. Yeah, work his way up the middle for a gain of about four on second down. At the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to that and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. On second down, they'll run with White. And this is going to be a Bucks first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. He had a really solid first half running the football and picking up where he left off here in the third quarter. How about the yardage he's piling up right now? This feels like a full game, not just a series that we're watching right now. I know people are screaming, where are the adjustments from halftime on the defensive side of the ball? Sometimes they're just not there. Sometimes you just got to find a way to tackle someone. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. Well, partner, they've been running it well the entire game, and the big guys up front, they're a huge reason why. And now they're reaping the benefits as they continue to open up big holes and gain nice yardage. Second down and six now. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield. And that one's going to come up a little short. It's incomplete. He had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. To throw, Mayfield. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trait in pregame warm-up, but I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust. And that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. And he gets us from inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. You know, I have a pretty good friend, Charles Davis, who tells me that when he sees plays like that, strong runs to the right, reminds him of the 1960s Green Bay Packers. Boy, those were the days back when the fullback actually carried the ball as well as blocked. Then you had a halfback. You had pulling guard. And Evans calls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. Mike Evans in 11-yard touchdown. And the Bucks have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. McLaughlin now to add the PAT. It's up and good to make it Touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. Scott on the return, out of the end zone. They had tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. So here are the Eagles now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. And Charles, it feels like we're set up for a good second half here. Came out of the locker room, one score game. Now the lead has already changed hands. Well, this offense 
they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back. Yeah, and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match, right? And we're just, uh, you know, our heads just keep moving. Which side has it? Which side's going to score? How are they going to go out doing it? A little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose runner pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Right back to Swift again on second down. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of a yard, so it's back to third and ten. I know they got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rally quickly on the defensive end. Third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. The Eagles send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. Taking it about the 36. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return. And they will take over first and 10. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. He would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> Well, you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second and six. Mayfield to throw it. A quick throw there is incomplete. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. They'll drop the throw. As to the sideline and pulled in. And he will go out right near the 35-yard line. That'll give him 60 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. First down, here's White. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Mayfield now on second down. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. Trying to get their tight end involved finally. That's the first time that they've looked his way. He's kind of been a forgotten man in this offensive scheme. Yeah, it didn't look his way at all in the first half. And I'll bet you the offensive coordinator made a note at the half and said, let's get him involved because he could be a big-time playmaker for us. Well, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. So many times when we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they will open their lead up to a touchdown at 24-17. These kickers now used to be that a 50-plus yarder was caused for celebration. Now it's seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny when we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out that they're all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right, baseball players. We're finding athletes all along and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts.
After the made field goal, here's McLaughlin back out there to kick it away. Oh, the return, Boston Scott. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Eagles offense back out onto the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. But first down, it hurts. Oh. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And it looks like one of the DBs has it. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. Mayfield now after the fumble recovery. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. Well, a turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. I'll give them credit winning that first snap and forcing an incompletion. They're hoping that'll deflate the offense a little bit if they took the field charged up after taking over after a turnover. They defer to White out of the shotgun. And he'll snag about five yards down to the 32. But really, that was no surprise there. They've been running it well all game. And I know goals change all the time, but any team will take that type of run each and every time. They had great starting position to begin the drive, but now they look up at a third and five. Here's Mayfield. And that is incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Chase McLaughlin now for the field goal try. He was true on his first, this a tough one, from 49 yards away. And his kick is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So they recovered the fumble, but ultimately could not take advantage of the short field. Definitely a lost opportunity right there. I mean, they were in prime position with the six on the board. Ended up settling for three. kick it away Scott on the return out of the end zone and no alley to be found the coverage was solid and he's dropped at the 18 here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession right now they're in a bit of a tough spot here CD you trail him by double digits remember the last time out they fumbled. They're going to have to play some clean football here on this possession. And all the talk on their sideline has been about taking care of the football, making sure that they're handling the ball correctly. So you know they'll be squeezing the rock pretty tight here. They just have to be careful not to go so hard in doing that that they actually cause themselves other problems. Take care of the ball, but still try and play free and natural. The second and ten now as we roll along in the third quarter from Tampa. Play action. Here's Hertz. And incomplete on the deep ball. That's some good closing speed there defensively because that's a double for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never getting back. Converged on his man and broke the play up. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. From the gun, it's Hurts. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. 18 yards the gain for number 18. And that's a good job there of knuckling down as an offense. You're trying to avoid three and out at all costs. And after two straight incompletions, this one's on target, and they're able to keep the chains moving. Swift going to try up the middle. 
And space tough to come by there as he'll get maybe a yard to the 37. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Right back to Swift again on second down. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 44. They've been running it well all game, and why not? The big guys up front, they're just having a ball, creating monster holes for their guys to run through. Here now, third and a yard. They'll try and pick it up by running the action to the right. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. And this is one of those plays that if you can use it to keep the chains moving, it's a good play. And not only that, it tends to tamp down the pass rushers because they have to recognize this play and stay at home. The quarterback uses it well. Read option, keeps it, and picks up a first down with some nice running. Hurts throw here taken in as he's able to find Goddard. So just three yards on the completion there, and it'll be second down. He's been quiet today in the passing game, just his second catch. Yeah, and people have to come up with schemes to limit him, and, and what a lot of teams do, they'll double him, you know, use a linebacker underneath, a safety over the top. Sometimes they'll just take a corner, maybe their third corner if he's a bigger guy, and put him on him man-to-man -to, -man to try and limit his touches. Just keep mixing it up, give him different angles, different looks, like a good boxer does. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Tampa. It's the Eagles behind on the scoreboard, but with the football here as we start the fourth quarter. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and ten. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Well, for that being an option play, there really weren't too many options available for him, were there? No, there weren't, and at least he was able to get back to the line of scrimmage, so he didn't lose anything, but you're exactly right. Nowhere to go. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. He's going to get that to Swift underneath. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. They'll look to make it three for three on third down conversions. They need a yard here. They'll try and run here with Swift. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. They go play action with Hurts. That puts him in excellent position, first and goal after a gain of 19. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. And he's in. Touchdown, the Eagles. DeAndre Swift, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Eagles have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Well, time to let those folks know who are tuning in looking for the late local news. And we may be a moment because we've got a game again. And partner, except for those on the West Coast where it'll be seen in its regular time, right? That's the way it works, doesn't it? But how about that? Big-time drive right there. If they're going to have any chance, they needed a touchdown there, and they went right down the field and work their way into the end zone. Let's go. 
Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. Back now comes Tampa Bay. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Mayfield on play action. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot and forced the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. The Bucks on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This will be third and six. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Ten yards there and a Buccaneer first down. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. Now a give up the middle. This is right. And the defense closes quickly there. He'll get maybe a yard to the 33. And we'll pause here for an injury. I believe that's a running back. Yeah, that's Rashad White who's shaken up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. Ball at the 33, second and nine. Now the first carry for Chase Edmonds. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sift through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. They'll see about converting this third and eight. Mayfield down. throw there and it's going to wind up incomplete. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. This is brought in at the 21. 32-yard punt, six on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 138 yards rushing for him now as his big night continues. He continues to have a big night here under the lights carrying the football. And some guys prefer night games. For whatever reason, their bodies react a certain way. They love the spotlight. Maybe that's what it is. The best seats in the house, the ones where he's carrying the football for his offensive teammates, the worst seats... The 11 guys trying to tackle him on defense. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? It's a tough task to match up to him. Sometimes being a linebacker in the middle of the field is kind of like being a doctor on the field. you got to make the right diagnosis. 
passes. Here he correctly sets his run and shoots through to make the play in the backfield. He's got his target. That's complete. He'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. 11 yards for number 11. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. They run out of the gun with Swift. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Stuck for the loss by Devin White. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Second down, here's Hurts. This short throw caught by Goddard. And he's got this down to the 35. The Eagle passing game looking good on this drive. It's a first down. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. They run the option here on first and 10. And a solid run down inside the 30. Six yards there on the keeper. It's second down. A little do-it-yourself run right there and a nice game. And I like that he knew that that was about all he was going to get. So he did a nice job of protecting himself, took care of the football, took what the defense gave him. If they continue to allow him to do that, they'll find their way taking what they can all the way to the end zone. Throwing his hurts. He'll find Swift out of the backfield. And tackle down after a gain of three. Moves him with one yard to go on third down. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. This has been an up-and-down, back-and-forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive could take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Here's Hurts to throw. Got an open man. It's Scott. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. have taken a fourth quarter lead there it is partner you see it four fingers <laughs> what does that four mean fingers. That, four, that signifies the fourth quarters here that's right who's going to dominate usually both teams are holding them up we own the fourth quarter what we found out so far two touchdowns here and now they've taken the lead yeah, second one putting them in front you know what i see on the other sideline though it seems like they've tensed up had that lead they were playing not to lose it and they've lost it that's a great observation when you play not to lose you usually don't win. Now, though, they'll have the opportunity to respond. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Taken at the goal line. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. So Mayfield and the Bucks down 31-27. A minute 54 on the clock. 
They've surrendered a double-digit lead, but can rescue themselves late as they come up on first down. Mayfield. Left side here, that's complete to Godwin. Mayfield's pass, complete to Chris Godwin. He steps out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. They'll come up now, second and nine. Now Mayfield. Gets this to Moore. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. That gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. Mayfield to throw. Here's a quick pass. He's got Chris Godwin. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. Here's Baker. Looking for Godwin again, and he's got him once more. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first down. So that's going to double their pleasure for sure. They get the first and save a timeout. Absolutely ideal there. Get a good size play, get out of bounds. Well, you saw the coaching there. That is taught and it is emphasized. Get out of bounds, understand your situation, as well as just understanding the game. Mayfield. This ball complete to Trey Palmer. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Now second and four. Mayfield. Otten brings it in over the middle. And he has another first down as they'll get the ball down to the Eagles' 13-yard line. Now a timeout called for by the offense as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Two timeouts still available in this final minute. It's first and ten now. Now Mayfield. And this is caught. Touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. Tommy Price is a rematch over time where the offense works on scoring late in the game and finding a way to win, as we just saw there. Just saw it right there. Now can they preserve that advantage that they just got? Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. So it's now a three-point game here in the closing stages as a field goal now can only tie it. Touchdown, here's McLaughlin to kick off. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. So now it's the Eagles' turn, trailing by a field goal. A little under 40 seconds to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. He'll look to throw, and he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge 
play at this point in the game. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Pass complete. Gowder. Look at the big man rumble. He takes it across for the touchdown, and they've taken the lead late in the final minute of the fourth. Wow. Wow. What an outstanding drive right there to take the lead, and also, Charles, didn't leave their opposition with a whole lot of time on the clock. Yeah, I like the way that you're viewing this because they did a tremendous job to put themselves in a position to win, but they can't celebrate just yet. They've got to clamp down on any big plays and force them to use up those timeouts without making any headway. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll put it out to the 25. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. Now Mayfield finds White, and not a whole lot there. Maybe three yards on first down. The Bucs going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 14 seconds to go in the game. Here's a second and seven. Mayfield to throw. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. <laughs> well, this game has certainly had no shortage of offense. Both teams have been ripped up from the start. And here's yet another big play. Boy, both defense have just got to be dragging out there because they've been run ragged throughout. Here's first down. Here's Mayfield. This for all the marbles. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. So the defense helping him out a little bit here late in the fourth. Yeah, and you're exactly right. And when you're the one doing the chasing, you'll take a little help from the other guys, won't you? One last shot for Mayfield here. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. Charles, normally when you see a group score this many points, it's a complete blowout. But instead, they needed every single one of those in this close, high-scoring affair. Yeah, Brandon, I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to one possession game at the end, that's not something we see very often. And 